It's that time of year, spring has sprung, and it's time for Premiere Pro updates. Version 25.2 is full of a ton of great new features, including media intelligence, caption translation, generative extend, as well as new color management. If you're ready, let's jump on in. So in the new version of Premiere Pro, there is now a search panel, which is powered by media intelligence. You can click on this little search icon in the upper right hand corner to open up the search panel. So basically it uses AI or media intelligence to search for clips based on a visual description based on the transcript or by metadata. One thing to note here before we search is that it's only searching for media that's inside of open projects. So if you have a bunch of open projects in Premiere Pro with media inside of it, it'll search that media. But if you have a new project with no media inside, it won't search for anything because there's no media to search for. So my feedback here would be allow us to search beyond the Premiere Pro project, right? Like for example, if you have cloud storage like I do, my team and I use LucidLink, it would be great if I could search our entire LucidLink file space for a particular clip. So that's the feedback. Now let me show you some searching. So first let's keep it simple and just put in something basic like person skating. And you can see it found a bunch of different clips of different people skating. And you can see that the clips here are not named person skating. It's actually searching based on the visuals of the media itself. And if we double click on this in the source panel, you will see that it's set in and out points for the action where the person is skating. So that way, when you drag it in your timeline, it's only taking that one action, saving you time. All right, so let's get a little bit more specific here. Let's try person skating with lens flare at sunset. And there we go. If we scrub through, we can see that there is a lens flare at this moment. Also, if you've transcribed interviews or your talking head for YouTube, you can use the search panel to search by keyword to find a moment where somebody said a keyword. So for example, if we type in athlete here, we can see the results right away. And if you double click on one of these results, it'll open up the text panel and it will take me to this moment in the interview where the word athlete is spoken. So from there, if you want, you can just quickly take this snippet and drag it to your timeline. Another use case, let's say you're editing a documentary and you have a very long archival clip and you only wanna use the segments that shows the newscaster speaking. So what we can do here is just search newscaster. And if we click on the results here, you can see that there's an in and out point just on the parts of this long clip that feature the newscaster. If you click on another one, the same thing happens. So what you can do here is you can select all of these clips and drag them into your timeline to create a string out. So this gets you one step closer to building your rough cut. This stops you from having to open up that long archival clip, scrub through to each moment that the newscaster is there and drag it in the timeline manually. What would normally take probably 30 minutes of work can take just seconds. It's pretty cool. Also, I spoke with Adobe and they said that media intelligence is completely local, so you do not need an internet connection for it to work. All right, next up is caption translation. So here I have the text panel open. I've already created English captions on this video. Editors, we all know that our time is precious. So let me show you how it works. With the language already transcribed here, you can click this icon here to translate your captions into multiple languages. And you can see that English is auto-detected as the source language. And then for target, you can choose as many as you want. Let's do French and let's do Spanish. And style, we can choose to keep the text style that we currently have, which is called text style one. Choose that one and then I'll show you how to change the color. Another thing that's important is that the current captions that I have, I actually reduced the character length to 20, so that way it's not too long. And I also made sure to make it single lines, but it's completely up to your preference. So then I'm gonna hit translate. So what it's doing right now is it's uploading. You do need to be connected to the internet for this, by the way. As you can see here, the English is turned on, but let's turn off the English on caption layer one and let's turn on the French. Now, if we wanna restylize the French, what we can do is select one of these and then go up to background and let's change the French background to like a green and press okay. And then we can go up here and we can add this style. Let's just call it green, press okay. And now all of the captions are green. And now we have our Spanish. And if we want to, just like before select one, go down here and let's make our Spanish, let's say a red background. We can just turn them on and off. You can also have multiple at the same time. So if we wanna have both, for example, 
this one here. So then we can go here and we can adjust the alignment and transform to make it a little bit lower. But then again, you need to create that new style, just call it V2. So now we can see them both playing at the same time. Editors, we all know that our time is precious, whether you're in a time crunch. So as you heard inside the reel, every second counts when it comes to editing, right? Having to download and share media takes time. And this is why me and my remote team switched to Lucidlink last year, because we no longer need to download our media to get started on an edit. Let me explain how it works. When I'm done filming a video, I will upload my footage to our Lucidlink file space. Rickard and Jiva, my editors that are located on entirely different continents, who also have access to our file space, will see the footage as it starts to upload. And they don't have to download. With a strong internet connection, they can play back the files, start to import them, and start editing right away. And if you don't want to rely on the internet while you're editing, you can open up the Lucidlink panel in Premiere Pro and pin in the media locally that's in your sequence. So in a way, while Lucidlink is cloud storage, it behaves like a local drive that mounts to all of our computers. So we can access and open all the same Premiere Pro projects and everything stays online. So if you have any more questions about how this works, just leave a comment below or better yet, you can ask me in person at NAB show. I'll be there. You can come by the Lucid Link panel and workshop at the Creator Labs in South Hall, where myself and Rickard are going to be talking about our workflow with Lucid Link. So, if you've been thinking about trying a new cloud storage, Lucid Link does not disappoint. You can use my link below to get 30 days free. Thanks to Lucid Link for sponsoring, and now more updates. I've demoed Generative Extend before, but now it's in the main app of Premiere Pro, and you can extend video clips up to two seconds and audio up to 10 seconds. You can extend 4K now, which is awesome, as well as vertical video, which I know some of you have asked before. And basically generative extend just will literally extend the last frame of the clip while adding some natural motion based on the existing footage. What are some use cases for this? The first use case is to hold on a character a little bit longer before a cut. So here in the timeline, we jump between these two different characters. But on this take, he shifts his eye quickly before the next cut. So what we can do here is roll the clip back to before he shifts his eyes. And then we can grab the generative extend tool to roll out and note that as we do that, because it's linked with the audio, it's also extending the room tone of the audio clip. So that way there's no awkward gap or sound gap with the extension. And by the way, you will need an internet connection with Generative Extend because it uploads it to Firefly and then spits back the extension inside of your timeline. So now as we play it back, you can see it holds on his gaze a bit longer, helping us keep our pacing and not have that awkward eye shift at the last moment. So in this shot, there's a moment where the goggles fly off the helmet. And we want to keep the shot longer, but we want the goggles to stay on for continuity with the other shots. So what we can do is drag this back to the frame before the goggles fly off. And then we can use the generative extend to extend it out a couple more seconds. And what's really cool that I didn't mention here is generative extend is a background process. So you can go on and edit other things while it's generating. And again, once it's done, you'll see that AI generation label and let's play it back to see the result. So while this uses Firefly to create the extension, it's not generating a crazy new clip for us. It's confining the generation based on the data in the previous frames of that clip to just extend it out a little bit longer. And next up is color management. So here I have some raw files that were shot on red in log. So if I drag and drop them into my project panel, you'll see that they automatically update the color. It's not in that milky color. And that's because in Lumetri Color underneath settings, if we open up project, we have color manage auto detected log and raw media turned on. If we turn that off, you can see the clips start to revert back to this kind of milky log footage. This means you don't have to worry about your color. You don't have to apply a conversion LUT to get rid of that milkiness and bring back in that color. So a couple more things to talk about. Let's bring this clip into our timeline. So now with the clip selected in the timeline and we go back to settings, now you can see that there's no input LUT, right? It's just use media color space and it auto detected red. And it pretty much supports most of the popular cameras now. What I wanna pay attention to now is 
the color setups and the color setup presets. So right now it's being squeezed into a Rec. 709. And before this update, it was always being squeezed into Rec. 709. But now we have the option for wide gamut tone mapped. Let me show you the difference here. So if I go into my Lumetri scopes right now, so if we go to edit in Lumetri color, you can see here that we can go in and we can make some adjustments in the curves, for example. We can do a little S curve here. Now, if we go back to settings and let's change it to wide gamut tone mapped. If you just saw what happened with the waveform, it just went because now we have more data to work with. So now we can go in and we can add even more contrast. Drop the shadows a bit, increase the whites. All right, and now we just have an even far richer image. So we're just getting access to more data to really control the highlights and the shadows more because before you weren't really editing true log and raw. And that's why a lot of people who wanted to do color were sending it off to DaVinci Resolve, which had this capability. But now with the settings, if you're working with log and raw files, be sure to use the wide gamut tone map so you have more information to work with. And also it's important to note that the color setup is for our project, but for outputting and exporting, you also have options here too. Most likely you're gonna export to Rec. 709, but if you need to export for HDR, there's options for HLG and PQ as well. There's a lot more options here to work with with this new color space backbone of Premiere Pro. And remember, all these settings are located inside the Lumetri color panel underneath settings. So that's all for the updates. I do wanna note that there's some other updates that aren't as flashy that are behind the scenes. For example, in the last update, it has faster performance for H.264. So keep an eye out for new regular updates that happen all the time and you'll see a lot of speed performances. So let me know what you think about these updates. I know I'm excited, especially for the caption translation and the color management. So that's all for this video. I hope you guys are having a great spring and as always, keep creating better video with a gal. Bye. Whoop.